main agenda here today is on the traffic amendment bill 2014. Some of you might have heard about it, some of you might be hearing about it for the first time or when we send out the invitation. But I think uh, the long and short of it is that uh, we are trying to amend our traffic bill to address certain things that uh, have previously not been addressed. And we're going to get to the details of that, just uh, to look at the key highlights of the bill and uh, some of the issues that uh, might be of interest uh, uh, to each of us in our respective uh, profession. So I'm going to request uh, that uh, we do just uh, a quick round of introduction. My expectation today is to really understand in more detail about how this new legislation will help our children be safe and particularly the impact and the, the linkages with cycling and walking facilities because as we all know one of the key solutions to improving road safety is to have good NMT infrastructure in place. My expectation is that uh, at the end of it all this bill becomes an act and supports public health in the reduction of uh, road traffic injuries and fatalities in Kenya. My expectation is to gain more insight into the amendment bill and how to collaborate with other stakeholders of the same. And my expectation at the end of the day is to see the implementation of this is successful because it's very important to our children. <coughs> it's run everywhere in this country. And so why this bill is important is that uh, finally we have uh, a law that is going to have uh, specific interest and specific focus on issues of uh, school going children and the buses and issues of speed around schools and most importantly the regulation of the transportation of, uh, of school going children and, uh, and uh, issue, I mean, the, the, the speed around the, the school area. Thank you everyone for coming today. Um, I just want to say that besides uh, working in urban planning. Uh, I am also a parent and I have also been a teacher here in Kenya and one of the saddest things I ever saw when I was a teacher was a small schoolgirl crushed on the highway in her uniform. And at that time I was not thinking very much about urban planning. I said that is a traffic accident. And now that I've put more thought, and I'm a mother, and I have children who walk to school, take school bus, also I worry, <laughs> even in New York sometimes, about my child walking, um, I realize that that was not a traffic accident. That in fact, we failed that child. That that child died out of official neglect. She died from traffic violence that we allowed to happen. Why do I say that? Because that child is, was only a child. She was probably eight or nine coming home from school and we didn't protect her because when she hit a road there was no one there like what the lollipop group is doing that was mandated to help her cross when there were matatus and other vehicles on that road, trucks. There was no safe crossing. There was no law that said you have to slow down when you go near a school with a traffic police to say, watch and say, if you do, you know, if you're speeding, you're definitely going to get a fine. There was nothing there to protect her and she died. And many children are dying today across the world, but here very much so because that we have failed with our official responsibilities, including not having laws like this one. You might be wondering why you see those pictures on the wall. Uh, the people in Mathari through Reality Tested Youth Program have been working with children um, there along Juja Road in particular. Uh, and what's striking uh, is how many children have died in that neighborhood. David, I think uh, I was told that about 10 children over maybe a period of a year have died just in this one small area along Juja Road. What's very interesting, we asked these children to draw pictures of their neighborhood. And if you look on the walls, you'll see some of the pictures of how the children see their neighborhood. And in one of them, in many of them, you'll see a big road like what you see there. We do not see the child even understanding that there, there could be some place to cross that road. 
There's no crosswalk, speed bumps, nothing. And that is the reality of that child's neighborhood today. And I just want to end with one other small anecdote. I have talked to Matatu drivers, including James, who is also a parent of small children. So children don't just take school buses, uh, they also take Matatus. And one of my colleagues said that he has a, a Matatu driver friend who actually learned on school buses how to drive. If you can imagine that these children are subjected to drivers who do not know how to drive because there's no regulation. Um, and the whole issue also of children who don't have school buses, they are poor children in slums and they take Matatus. How are they treated? How do they navigate the Matatu system? That's another whole question, and James has uh, given us some very interesting insights, uh, and I hope he'll, he'll speak up today about that as well. So I want to say that this bill is really way overdue, and so important to now getting rid of that official neglect, the failure to protect our children. We'd want to ensure that when children are going to school, will be in a safer environment all, all the way to school and back home in the, in the evening. And of course, some of the things which are going to be done will, uh, if this bill is going to be implemented, uh, is going to be enacted, will, uh, are some things which may require some modifications of the environment around school. Uh, here we are talking about all those things about speed coming measures, uh, road bumps, uh, um, paths for children as they go to school, zebra crossing, uh, among others, food breaches and the rest. So NTSA will undertake to ensure that some of these things will be implemented and we are going to discuss with our sister authorities in the Ministry of Transport and Infrastructure and uh, who are dealing with highway authority. And here we are talking about the Kenya National Highway Authority. They are our sister authority in the same ministry. We are in constant discussions with them uh, among other issues, uh, road safety. So indeed, this is one of the things which we will we, 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 we'll, we'll undertake as we go along. NTSA is an lead agency in road safety is quite supportive of this bill. I'm sure most of the people who, or rather, the people who drafted this bill at some point may have come to National Transport and Safety Authority to seek the, uh, what they think about this bill. And um, from the Office of the Director General of uh, National Transport and Safety Authority, I think there's, there's no, the, uh, the fact that we don't have any objections to it means that we want this bill passed yesterday, if, if, if possible. Uh, the purpose of the bill is to ensure safety of children on the, on the roads, especially around schools. So what the bill does seek to do is to reduce uh, one, to deal with one aspect that internationally has been recognized as one of the drivers of road crashes, and that is speed. Uh, if you live in this country, you will notice that uh, the, the, the vehicles that are used to transport school-going children is actually uh, the, their matatus or the vehicles that are on their way uh, towards them being written off. And which really tells us a lot about how we deal with our children. Uh, if the matatu is doing very well, it will ply the highest route, maybe Nairobi, Eldoret route. And uh, then as, it, uh, goes, as its value goes down, it's, it does the urban routes. Then uh, the, as it goes down, it does the urban routes, which are seen to be less a valuable gist, and then on its way to the dead birth, it's actually used to transport children, which really tells us how we test our society by looking at how it treats the most vulnerable in our midst, who are our children. So internationally recognize that uh, speed limit around where children uh, are should not be more than 30 kilometers. So 30 kilometers is the recommendation, and this is uh, for nursery school, primary schools, and secondary schools, and sections which uh, are used by children uh, to access learning institutions. Now, uh, so far we have held meetings with the different partners. One of them was uh, a stakeholders meeting we held here, and somebody told us in that meeting, you are so much concerned about roads. What about places like Budalangi? where we do not use roads, but we use boats. What will be the speed limit? And uh, I, I'm raising this because we are talking about public participation and what are the issues that need to come. So we had to factor that in. And um, uh, the other question, uh, there's a member of parliament from Kisi who said that if you have 30 kilometers 
uh, on the highway. That is, uh, for example, the uh, Waiaki Way, where we have many schools. Uh, when will I reach Kisi if I'm moving at a speed of 30 uh, um, uh, on, in places where we have schools? And we said uh, the, national, uh, the, the national authority, we're looking at Kenya, uh, where you have uh, schools, they, we can have uh, foot bridges, and then where you have a uh, time where schools children are going. So I, I'm emphasizing on this, because this is at the heart and at the center or the cornerstone of this legislation, the protection of children and speed. Uh, the other uh, provision, uh, that is the amendment of uh, Section 3B, uh, uh, 1B, that seeks to place the duty on the highway authority and the respective county governments to establish speed calming measures. Here we're talking about bombs, we're talking about, if you, if you are in the city, and we, since we have journalists here, if you go to Jamuri Primary on uh, Kilim, uh, Kibera uh, uh, Road, um, uh, railway station road, you actually notice that already they have put in the speed bounce, they already have done, uh, they erected the signs at 30 kilometers per hour, and they are working very well. Uh, the, uh, the same is happening, I think, if you use the bypass, uh, right from uh, um, Yaya all the way to Westlands. So uh, we really up acknowledge efforts already of domesticating and applying internationally best practices. You know, it's really shocking when you, when you drive around Nairobi, and you see about 30 kids in a matatu, and it's written school bus, on top of each other. And we, have, we are a nation of laws. We have parents. We have governments. We have parliament. And nothing's being done. So when Kimoso approached me on this bill, I said I was going to be supportive. And we are going, I'm going to make sure that my members of parliament, my friends in parliament, are proactive on this. And you know, in, when you try to introduce a law, it's always very difficult because everyone has an interest. Like the first time when I approached, we, Kimosop and I went to the committee, the transport committee, we had serious resistance. Some of them say, throw this bill out, it's, not, it's useless. What am I going to do when my the children in my village are being taken by Boda Boda to school and they have no other mode of transport? And we told them, you cannot have three or four children in a picky picky. It's impossible, it's wrong. Even our conscience cannot let us believe in that. So I, we convinced them, and now the issue is coming now is the issue of the speed limit now. They say 30 is too, is too slow. Well, if we sign international agreements with other countries, international law, if the rest of the world is going 30, we go at 30. Is this, you know, there is this culture in this country that you, we are all rebellious to the rule of law. And for some reason, you know, we are told to wear seat belts. You can't, you don't wear it, it's your safety. Even me sometimes I don't wear, I don't wear it. <laughs> Why can't we have all our school buses in one color? Every school bus, one color, it's bright, a color that can be seen from a kilometer away. So even if somebody's drunk, you'll see that color and say, well, although I'm drunk, I'm going to be careful because there are children in this bus. So we become a nation of laws. So we see that the yellow bus, why would a country like America do that? Because they realize the power is in color, and that when you drive, you understand the bus in front of me, the bus behind me, has got children, and as a driver, you also have children. So, what I'm thinking is, this bill will not have much resistance in Parliament. Maybe a few of my colleagues have told me about, told me about the speed limit, which we'll discuss, and I want your support on that one. I want now to open the floor. Uh, for your intervention, for your comments, for your questions for any of the speakers. And uh, also, if you think, if you've gone through the bill and you think there are specific uh, areas, specific issues that uh, we need to make improvement on to make it uh, more useful and effective, please feel free to add the same. We'll uh, be able uh, to uh, chase this maybe with Kimosop and maybe do another raft of, uh, of a petition or memorandum which you can be able to present to Mweshimiwa if we feel that there are areas that we need to be improved or to be amended in that particular bill. But let's hear from you uh, now. It's now your opportunity. Uh, Mweshimiwa, I would uh, expect you to introduce a clause where you ban a travel for school children at night, because I didn't see that one in your bill. Secondly, 
uh, I would like you to recommend also that um, apart from someone talking about uh, curriculum for school, um, you know, these schools for training drivers and so on being improved. I've been working in some other some people talk about being in the low income area or the less privileged, like in areas like Iberia and Mahari and so forth. And we've had this issue of children being transported as young as even less five years going to the preschools and ECD centers with motorbikes. And uh, when you look at the number of children being very, by that one motorbike, there are like four or five kids behind one gentleman. So that's a very, to me, I tend to look at it like it's a very risk and a very critical part of it. It's also a means of transport. And uh, another point as far as the motorbikes are concerned too, is uh, in real sense, I don't really understand the traffic rules for the motorbikes. Because sometimes you find that the vehicles are supposed to move and the motorbikes are also going crossing the road. Pedestrians are also crossing and the motorbikes are still crossing. So in, where do the motorbikes really stand? What is their traffic light says green? When does it say red? Because anytime it's red, they're still crossing. Anytime it's green, they're still crossing. And some of them are, have kids behind them. On the issue of professor talked about that uh, there is need to consider a ban of night travel for children. I think that is something which is in the offing and with discussions with the ministry concerned with education, uh, then that should be addressed and we are working quite closely with Ministry of Education on issues with transport policy and our, our guidelines which subsequently will be dispersed to the school heads and school management boards all across the country. Then, of course, you talked about road safety from the beginning for all school-going children. I think that is already in the curriculum. The thing we are trying to do currently in NTSA is to ensure that um, we mainstream, we have road safety in all sectors. We always say that there is need to have road safety in all sectors of the economy or otherwise of the society. Talk of, of course, currently it is... Um, we need to have it in education. We need to, of course, it's in health. We need to have it, of course, in transport. We need to have it in, in name it, in whatever you do. In, in whatever you do, road safety has become part and parcel of your life. So there's all that aspect, and we are working on a policy to ensure that it is mainstreamed in all, uh, uh, all, all government functions. Then, um, quite fast, of course, um, issues to do with uh, non-motorized transport. It also has to do with planning, and um, with this devolved government, we need also to ensure that some of this uh, will also go to the county governments to consider that whenever you're constructing roads, you don't construct roads just for the vehicles. We need to consider the motorcycle, the, the, the bicycles, the pedestrians probably more importantly than anyone else. Then motorcycles, I think it is a big problem, but uh, we are raining on them. Slowly but surely at some point they should be rained on. We have started with Matatu putting them in circles whereby if you have to operate a PSV vehicle, you cannot operate solely as one. If you have to buy many, you have to buy maximum of 30 or alternatively form, join a circle with a minimum a number of people. Of course, you know there are rules to motorcycles. They are as good as any. You are not supposed once there is a red light, you are supposed to stop. Uh, we want an NTSA, uh, uh, like, uh, and since the media is here, I know we have even we've asked a question about corruption. We also need to challenge the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission to be very uh, innovative in the fight against corruption because I feel they, they, they have not cracked it. Uh, in the, and I'm, I will give this example, Mishimia, uh, since you, are, you meet those people. Let's look at for this issue of digitalizing uh, uh, our... our um, driving license. I am sure it is going to have uh, corruption by f because when, when the, 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 like the next is the insurance sector. Uh, if you look at the premiums you pay, we know I'm talking to a prof, so most likely he even told us that he's driving. When you look at the premium you pay to insurance firm, you notice they have socialized the insurance sector. Yet you, I know of a driver who drove for 15 years at the Institute of Economic Affairs and did not have any accidents on the road or road crashes, yet the company was paying the same standard premium. So where is innovativeness in the insurance sector? If you look at, uh, um, I think, Schedule 4 on the roles of functions, county government as a function in, um, in traffic management. And uh, NTSC, this is where you come in strongly because the challenge we also are seeing 
with the national governments and national bodies, they want to lord over the entire nation. I think uh, national institutions need to be strategic and look at Article 6, where they devolve some of their functions and they engage and empower the counties. I have a small boy. My, my boy is now um, second grade. And I'm just in my mind, thinking that, <clears throat> you know, he goes, I take him to school in the morning, and he doesn't come back home. I mean, that's, that's a very powerful statement that you made. And uh, even in our own country, we don't even have counselorship psychologist, even this, the police force, where the police get killed every day, and they kill people. There's no single, there, there's no psycho, they, are, they have no psychologists, they have no counselors. I mean, think about how that is. It's all traumatized. So, I think the main thing is, in my opinion, is, is that uh, the subjective, the part that you, you lose a child is, is a very powerful tool in your mind. And we should, that's what we're trying to avoid here. I think at the end of the day, most things we will um, will the buck stops with the director, and as soon as this bill is passed, we'd like for them to be proactive. We we'll move on quickly. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I think uh, we've had a fruitful morning. So um, as a, a way forward, we all have a role to play when it comes to road safety. I think as a parent, before you put your your kid in that uh, old matatu, you must be able to ask yourself if you are doing any good to your child or you, you, you are just, uh, I mean, maybe you, you are driving a child to early grave, before you point a finger to the government or to uh, NTSA, you must also ask yourself what is it that you can be able to do as a parent to make sure that your children are safe. And uh, we all have a role to play in one way or the other. So as a way forward, and as you had, uh, is that we still have an opportunity as stakeholders to give an input uh, to this uh, traffic amendment bill. And uh, we welcome uh, your views as CARA. Uh, you can be able to get back home, have a, a look at the bill, which we shared on email. And if you have views that you think can go towards improving that particular bill, please share them with us. So uh, having said that, ladies and gentlemen, just to invite you for a cup of tea uh, that we have behind us. And I uh, request you to continue with this discussion. Please share with us your views. You can send an email to info at cara.or.ke if you have any, any information that you want to share with us. Or you can give us a call. I'm sure most of you have our contacts. I can give my cards after this. But let's keep uh, talking. Let's keep having the discussion. And let's keep playing our role as uh, stakeholders of this country and as people who have this, uh, the interests of this country at hand.